Welcome everyone, happy Thursday. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. Uh, thank you for joining today's webinar. I'm Renika Lightborn with Advanta IRA, and I'm excited to be joined by real estate developer Rashad Jones Jennings of Pros Pro Capital. Uh, thank you so much, Rashad, for being our speaker today. Thanks for having me. Rashad's gonna share his insight and expertise on building uh, luxury time home communities, but also his outlook on um, broader real estate development projects that he's currently working on, and also some of his success stories. Um, before I turn it over, I will give you just a brief overview of what self-direction is and how it works, and of course, the steps to get started with us. If you have questions, just feel free to type those in the question box. We'll uh, get those answered as we go, but also allocate some time at the end uh, to answer any remaining questions. Again, I'm Renika Lightborn with Advanta IRA. I'm one of the business development specialists. I've been with Advanta as an employee since 2019, but I'm also Advanta IRA client. Uh, I mean, yeah, client prior to joining. So self-direction is something that I both personally and professionally advocate. Uh, after today's call, if you want to do a one-on-one -on -one consultation, you're always welcome to uh, give me a call or send me an email. I definitely encourage you to visit our website at advantaira.com. It's a great resource for you, but you can also schedule a consultation with me or one of my colleagues. Just a little housekeeping disclaimer before we get started. Advanta IRA, we don't give any tax, legal, or investment advice. We don't endorse any particular product or service. All of the information that's going to be presented today is just for your educational purposes only. Uh, of course, we encourage you to always do your due diligence, consult with your attorneys, your CPAs, financial advisors before making any investment decisions. If self-directed IRAs is a new concept for you, I know it can be a lot of information initially, but just I want you to take away uh, just three simple points of just knowing that any IRA or former employer plan, like an old 401k, qualifies to be self-directed. Uh, two, you're always in control, so you get to choose what it that you want to invest in. So whether it's going to be um, tiny home projects or some other type of real estate related investment that Rashad talks about. And then, of course, um, just knowing that all of the income generated from the investment flows back into the IRA. If there's any related expenses, it's paid by the IRA. Just a little history about Advanta and who we are. Uh, we've been in business for 21 plus years now as the leading self-directed IRA administrator in the business. Uh, while we don't give our clients any tax, legal, or investment advice, our team is comprised of attorneys and also certified IRA service professionals. Uh, we have our headquarters is in the Tampa Bay area. Advanta has an office in Atlanta, which is one where I'm based, but we work with clients uh, throughout the country. Uh, we have about three billion under, a little over three billion now under our administration, and our focus here at Advanta is in addition to providing you great uh, educational content and have practitioners and experts like Rashad come in and knowledge share with you, we also just pro provide our clients that that one-on-one -on -one concierge style service where you have an assigned person who is with you for the life of your account. So when you're ready to make an investment, uh, they'll be able to guide you through that investment um, transaction. This webinar is recorded. It's going to be on our YouTube channel later today, um, but you can always uh, go to our website. And it'll be uploaded to our video library. In addition to events like this, uh, we have a long list of other uh, guest speakers and um, experts that come in and knowledge share with you. So check out our events page, uh, sign up for something that's you know of interest to you. I would also encourage you to uh, check out our podcast. My colleague Alex Kearney does a great job with, with our podcast, a little bit more informal, but uh, great content. And then our blogs, just anything and everything related to our profession, uh, you, you have a topic there. So exactly what is a self-directed IRA? Just very simply, self-directed just means that you as the account owner, you're gonna have complete control over the retirement funds, you have complete control over your investment decisions, but you get to really diversify outside of the traditional stock bonds and mutual funds. A lot of our clients use IRA funds to invest in real estate. So whether that's gonna be you know, a tiny home project or a single family or a multifamily unit. You can certainly use IRA funds to invest in uh, oil and gas, precious metals, uh, private equity. It's near limitless in terms of what's on the table for you to invest in. So a question that typically comes up is, you know, why do people choose to self-direct? You may look to self-direct for many different reasons. I'll just touch on three of them. One, it can be a new source of capital for you. So instead of you know, tapping into your emergency fund or taking out a bank loan, if you have funds that's just sitting idle in an IRA or an old employer plan, you can also move those funds uh, to make your next investment. Or if you're an investment provider and you're looking to raise capital, uh, there's nearly um, about almost $40 trillion sitting in retirement accounts and of that less than 4% of it is truly self-directed. So it's a great resource to be able to, to raise capital. 
the second reason as to why someone may look to self-direct is uh, just more so with real estate, we know it's a tangible asset, it's always gonna retain value. So whether it's a rental, um, you always have, have that, that value related to, to real estate assets. Uh, the, the stock market, the ups and downs, nobody can predict the market. Again, just allows you to diversify. And then of course the tax benefit, having those rents, those profits, those dividends, flow back into your retirement account tax-free or tax-deferred, depending on the type of account that you have. In terms of the type of account that can be self-directed, if you were to go to the IRS website, it's not going to say self-directed. It's just going to say, you know, for individuals, you have traditional IRAs or Roth IRAs. Uh, traditional just means you get a tax break up front. You grow your account over time. Once you reach retirement age and you take a distribution, you pay taxes at that point. Whereas with a Roth IRA, you're electing to pay taxes up front. As long as you hold that, hold that Roth IRA for five years and you're 59 and a half, which is the retirement age for the IRS, distributions will be tax-free. If you are uh, self-employed or have a side business or, you know, a real estate professional, you can certainly look to self-direct a SEP, simple or solo 401k. Uh, solo 401k uh, gives you, um, you know, greater flexibility in terms of higher dollar contribution amounts, um, also to just, just other benefits. If you want to talk more about it, you know, definitely schedule a consultation with me. Some lesser accounts that are also uh, just as important that you can also self-direct are educational savings accounts. So if you have kids or grandkids, you can certainly uh, put, put those funds to work to, to help uh, pay for their education. And then, of course, um, having a high deductible insurance uh, medical plan. If, as long as you have a high deductible plan, you can elect to self-direct and diversify and, and grow your HSA account. And then, of course, any former employer plan, uh, whether it's an old 401k or old 403b or TSP type plan, those funds can also be moved over and self-directed. The only thing I have to mention is if it's a current employer plan, meaning you still work there and you're not 59 and a half, then most times they'll restrict you from moving it. So don't be alarmed by it. Uh, you can certainly ask them if they'll make an exception for you. But if it's a former employer plan, you can move it, no issues. In terms of funding your account, there's several ways you can fund your account. So, you know, in addition to making contributions, uh, you can also transfer funds from an, an existing IRA. So let's just say you have an IRA at Child Schwab or Fidelity. You can move as much or as little as you want to to, um, to make your investment. There's no tax liabilities for you to do that. It's just going from one qualified retirement account to another trustee to trustee transfer. If it's an old employer plan, like an old 401k, you would actually have to initiate that request. You're not taking a personal distribution. Again, it's just going from one qualified retirement account to another. Your old employer plan will report to the IRS that X amount of dollars left. And then will report to the IRA that, hey, not to the IRS, X amount of dollars came in to neutralize so there's no tax liabilities. In addition to uh, funding your account by transferring or doing a rollover from an old employer plan, you can also make an annual cash contribution as long as you've earned income. So for 2024, uh, for 2024, you can certainly, um, if you've earned income, if you're under the age of 50, you can put in $7,000. If you're over the age of 50, you can put in uh, $8,000. Uh, starting in 2025, if you're between the ages of 60 and 63, uh, with the SECURE Act 2.0, then now I'm going to allow you to contribute an additional $10,000. So just uh, keep that in mind for, for the near future. Uh, for SEP IRAs and solo 401ks, again, you, you have higher contribution limits. Uh, for SEP IRAs, uh, you can put in up to 69000 uh, not to exceed 25% of your earned income. Same thing with solo 401k, where you have high contribution limits. So if you're under the age of 50 for solo 401k, if you're eligible, you can put in uh, 69000 If you're over the age of 50, you have an additional 7500 you can put in. So there's opportunity to put a lot of money um, into a solo 401k, as long as you can show that, you know, you're... you're, you're side business or your um, self-employed uh, business earn, earn that amount. For ESAs, you can make 2000 per year per child. Or for an HSA, again, check with your plan provider. But if it's a, a high deductible plan, for an individual, you can put in 4150 For a family plan, you can put in 8300 And then, of course, if you're over the age of 55, you have the ability to put in an additional $1,000. In terms of getting started with us, the process is pretty straightforward. Uh, when you're ready to proceed, you can actually fill out the IRA application directly on a website, while myself or my colleague can send you a, a customized link. Uh, we'll walk you through it, but essentially, uh, we, we can get your account open um, same day or within 24 to 48 business hours. 
And then of course we assign you a dedicated account manager who works with you, who works with your investment provider uh, to make sure everything is documented correctly in the name of the IRA. And then funding the account. So you could do a combination of all three, making an annual cash contribution as long as you have current income, transferring from an existing IRA, or doing a rollover, a direct rollover from an old employee plan. And then third, finally, uh, start making your investment. What is it that you're interested in? Is it something that Rashad's going to say on today's uh, webinar? Or is it something investing like private placement or precious metals? Um, it's it's um, pretty much a blank canvas for you to, uh, to, to invest. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Rashad. But let me just pull up the slide. Just bear with me one moment. Yes. And uh, like I said, Renika, uh, I like to do it um, how we did it last time. Um, if you got, I want to answer questions as I go. So if anyone has questions out there, any slide, I'm, I'm ready and willing and able to answer questions. I think that helps with my flow as a presenter. And uh, it also helps with uh, people kind of not forgetting their answers, I mean, their questions as I'm going through this presentation. So as I'm going through it, um, definitely feel free to um, ask questions. So we're here today to talk about uh, tiny homes, big opportunities and tiny home investing. This is my third time presenting to Avana IRA, and I want to thank you all for coming out on this Thursday afternoon. Um, you know, we've had, you know, great responses in the past, and hopefully we'll continue that um, here today. So a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Rashad Jones Jennings with Pulse Pro Capital, and uh, I'm a real estate developer. Um, I use... I'm a retired professional basketball player, um, played eight years professionally, had to retire at the age of 30 due to injury, and uh, I got right into real estate. I didn't have a plan B. It was either figure it out or figure it out, and uh, here we are. Um, I started out as a realtor, um, transitioned into flipping houses, um, transitioned that into building single-family houses, and once I started building single houses, I told myself, hey, I can build a cluster of these houses. So. Here I am now building communities, tiny home communities. I know that's what we're here for today. Um, and I'll also tell you about some other stuff that we have going on um, and down the line. Um, right here is a picture of me and my family at my first development, um, South Park Cottages, 29 tiny homes um, down in Atlanta, Georgia, um, the sub city of College Park down by the airport. Um, that was a great project, um, 29 homes. Um, that was, you know, it was a great learning experience. And now we're here for um, phase two, you know, um, doing it a little step up. I think the last one we did, it was kind of build a grade, um, a lot of Home Depot materials and things like that. But this development will be a um, luxury model. So um, I'm very excited for that. Right here, I want to play you a um, video. If I can get this video to play. I guess the video doesn't work when I share my screen, but I'll try to uh, get you all a visual and I'll send this video to Renika so she can send it to you all. I wanted you to see the finished product of the previous development. Um, you're looking, um, if you look straight ahead, that's that's my unit um, that, I, that, I, that I got with the development. And, um, you know, the video is, is much cooler. You get to see the inside of the house. You get to see the, the aerial view of the community and the things like that. So I thought that would help you know, with the visual, but um, when I'm sharing my screen, I don't think uh, the video plays. Rashad, you know what, like as questions come in and if you're able to pull up like just a, um, a browser and then if you have access to the video that way, uh, maybe that'll help, like you can go through your slides, but maybe if you can pull it up, like, I don't know if you have it on YouTube or something like that, you can reference. Okay, let me see. Let me see, I just downloaded it, so it should be here. Okay. Can you all see me? Can you all see the video? Yes. Okay. So I'll play it. It doesn't have any sound, but, um, you know, I definitely let you all see the visual of it and I'll talk you through it. So this right here is my unit, lot 17. Um, here's an aerial view of it. Um, we did this on three acres. Everybody told me I was crazy to do it. Don't do it in that area. Um, nobody will buy it. Nobody can afford it. And uh, we sold out within 50 days uh, without even putting it on the MLS. So, um, you know, I proved them wrong with that. And now we're here to do it again. Um, but but now the proof of concept, concept is here. We, we don't have to fight as hard, maybe with the municipalities getting approvals. But 
not what the people um we know what the people want and uh we'll, i'll show you that on one of the later slides um of my back office of people um going through the website inquiring about um this next development so um the tiny market the tiny home market is a specific niche and um i mean they 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 love they they love their tiny homes so um you know i think i don't think we'll have any issue um selling these units at all so let's go to the marketing strategy um some of the things that i'm doing with the marketing um that i didn't do last time because we ended up going viral on social media so social media kind of did the job for us um you know we didn't really have to do a lot so um, on this one we're going to be doing um home buyer seminars um new construction webinars basically educating the buyer on what to expect in new construction um because buying a resale is different from getting a house built you know you got a lot of waiting time um there you got to go to the design center to pick out your designs so we just basically trying to set expectations with the buyer so everybody is happy and uh you know they know what lies ahead um, another marketing strategy that we're going to do differently this time is that we're going to actually run some some ads and uh, the ads isn't per se to get buyers but it's, it's basically to kind of let people know hey we're at the pre-sale stage because a lot of people have been following this development for a year and a half so we just want to put the word out that hey um thanks for your support we're we're, we're ready to rock and roll with the pre-sale so we're going to run some ads um around um the pre-sale campaign Sales strategy. Um, some of the sales strategies that uh, I'm going to implement in this development. One is pre-sales. Um, pre-sales is one of my, you know, that's that's one of the things that I like to do. Um, I won't try to sell out all the units um, like I did last time. Um, you, you don't know what you don't know. Um, I, I'll tell you a funny story. Um, I was talking to this big time developer that um, had retired. And, um, you know, I was telling them about my my development. I was so happy telling them like, hey, we sold out in 50 days, you know? And uh, he just looked at me and with a straight face and just said, that means you sold them too low. <laughs> and I was like, oh man, I didn't think about that. So um, we're gonna pretty much try to sell at least half of these units pr via pre-sales. And, uh, you know, then we'll kind of, you know, see what the market gives us and see if we can kind of raise the prices. We don't want to make it unreachable, but we also don't want to short ourselves either if, if this is what the market wants. Um, another sales strategy that I'm implementing is the the lenders. Um, I, I get I get inquiries from all types of lenders 24-7, want to be the, the head lender on this project. Um, if you go to the website, you'll see that we have four preferred lenders. And the one stipulation that I put on these lenders is you have to have some type of incentive to help the buyer get in these units easier, um, whether that's um, point buy down, rate buy down, um, down payment assistance, any kind of grant programs. So we're trying to make it as easy as possible for these buyers to get into these units. Um, like I mentioned before, another thing that we're doing, we're going to actually have a home buyer seminar not a seminar on how to buy any house but a seminar specifically on a how, how to buy my houses so we're going to educate the buyer and their lender and their realtor on how to buy these pr properties specifically and also um, a step up from that um, my lender is also she's going to be doing a new construction webinar which tells them you know kind of you know setting a setting a tone of what to expect while under contract we had a to be honest, we had some issues with that on the last project because it was a lot of time, a lot of people buying homes for the first time, so they didn't know what to expect. So right now we're 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 taking that um, step ahead and making sure that we're educating the buyer along the way, so they don't so they don't so they don't have to guess. Um, this this right here. Um, so we haven't had any questions yet. You probably gonna have a lot of questions after this, and this is the slide that I really want to spend most of my time on. Um, with you all spending your hard-earned money, um, you know, investing in these projects, you want to understand the numbers. So um, I definitely want to spend a little bit more time on this slide to understand how do we get to that $3.7 million um, number and um, what that means for you. So we're building 42 luxury micro homes. 
On average, um, we're going to build them at 136,000 per unit, and we're going to sell them on average at 287,000 per unit. Um, we have we did have other expenses, um, the horizontal development, putting all the infrastructure in the ground, um, the pipes, the leaves, uh, not not the leaves, the pipes, um, the water lines, um, everything like that, getting it graded, getting it level. Um, so we, that that costs about 1.5 million dollars to get just to get it pad ready. And also we had another almost a million dollars in soft costs and general conditions um, that brought the budget cost to 8.1 million. Um, the sales, the total sales will be 12 million, which gives us a delta of about 3.7 million, in which 20% of that will go back to my initial equity investor. So if you missed out on being an equity investor on the, um, you know, on the previous presentation, um, don't don't miss out on the next one. Um, the equity investing is over for this one, but as you'll see on the later slide, uh, we do have other projects coming up. So. Quick math, if you multiply 3.7 million by 20%, that's 740,000 going back to the equity investors, um, you know, so they get their principal back plus, you know, 740,000 depend on what they put in. So the way we broke it down was shares. One $50,000 is one share. If you invested $100,000, you got two shares. If you invested $200,000, you got four shares. And, um, so that's kind of the breakdown of it. Um, initially, my pro forma was at 7.4 million. I mean, yeah, 7.4 million, which is not too far off from 8.1. Where my numbers got, um, you know, distorted was the horizontal. Um, I actually thought my civil engineer made me over-engineer the property, um, which is good for the buyers and good for the neighborhood. But I think some of the stuff that they had me do. Um, was not necessary, but um, all in all, it's still a profitable project, um, and that's 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 all we want. You know, we want to leave the the area and the community better than we found it, and um, <clears throat> so I'm not I'm not complaining about that. So, anybody got any questions on these on yeah. these financial projections? Yes, we found a couple questions came uh, a couple questions came in. It says, what is the minimum investment, and what is your typical um, ROI per year? All right, that's a good question. So we have different tiers. Um, class A is closed. That was the equity class, and then we had uh, we have now we now we're at Class C. The minimum is five thousand, but uh, it's tiered, right? So um, if you invest anywhere from five thousand to nineteen thousand, you get a twelve percent return. If you invest anywhere from twenty thousand to ninety nine thousand, you get a twenty percent return. And if you invest 100K or more, you get a 25% return. It's a preferred return um, APR, and you'll be get you'll be uh, gaining interest as long as your capital is deployed. Another good thing about being a debt investor, um, you get paid back first. So, um, ho hopefully that answers your question. Yes. The next question is: Do you have plans to build in the Denver area, or what's your area of focus? Say that again. Question is, uh, do you have plans to build in Denver area, and like what other uh, cities or states that you you would build in or you invest in? Yeah, so I hadn't uh, I hadn't got inquiries about Denver yet, but uh, we are under contract um, with uh, another plot of land. I think it's about 11 acres to do 46 micro homes in Tampa. Um, it's, it's actually Ruskin, Florida. It's a little suburb outside of Tampa. So um, me and a me and a couple of guys that I'm in a mastermind with um, are going to head that project down in Tampa. Um, we've we we're, we're currently in the entitlement stage, so um, we're not opposed to um, you know um, going outside of you know the city and state, but it just has to make sense, and um, we got to have boots on the ground. The reason why the Tampa uh, the reason why the Tampa project made so much sense to me was that I have two partners that are boots on the ground. And uh, they'll just be using my brain to navigate through the development. And I'll also be making trips down and everything. So, um, and they're real estate guys too. So, um, you know, we all get our, you know, uh, you know, our roles and, um, you know, we're, we're going to make it rock and roll. So uh, we're not opposed to Denver. It just has to make sense. Um, got to have boots on the ground and uh, got to make sure we have the capacity uh, for another project and capital. That's, 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 that's mainly important. 
Okay, more questions. Um, it says just bear with me. It says, is there a place that we can get more information for your project in Tampa? That's one question. Yes, yes, for sure. Um, if you could, how could we do this, Renika? Would they reach out to you and I could send you? On the, on the presentation, it should have your website. They can definitely go there. At the end of this presentation, you can give them your contact information, your website, and they can certainly um, go there. Next question is, do you partner with other developers and or inspiring developers? Um, well, uh, I, I, well, the guys that I'm partnering with in Tampa, they are developers. They just do different types of development. They develop beach houses. So um, to answer your question, yes, I do partner with developers. Um, you know, we definitely have to do a, a, a you know, thorough vetting process. I've had bad experiences with partners in the past, so I'm not rushing into anything, but I'm not uh, shutting the door on it either. Um, so we, it's something that we can definitely talk about and start building that relationship. I think that's that's the main thing for me is building a relationship, uh, you know, seeing each other in different aspects when, when it's going good, when it's going bad, because you never know um, how people react. And sometimes when you get in business with people, it's too late. You find out, you know, it's not what you thought it was and it's too late. You're already married. So um, I'm definitely will it, uh, willing to, you know, uh, build that relationship and see how we can partner with developers. And uh, what was that second part of the question, Renika? Um, and or inspire, inspiring developers. Like if somebody's new and they want to learn how to become a developer, like do you do like mentorship or partnerships in that way? Yeah, so I do have a mentorship um, that I'm starting up. I get, a, I, I've been getting, I've been trying to, you know, get away from that. But I, I to me, it feel like I, I, I don't want to be hoarding information. So I, I am starting up a mentorship program. Definitely reach out to me for that. We have different tiers. We got something for everybody, from webinars to a community. You know, where I'm in there talking on Slack, just, you know, going live while I'm on the site. Because I've always been documenting my process. I got about 670 videos on YouTube. So for the past six years, um, I've been documenting my entire process from flipping, from being a realtor, from building single houses to development, and uh, just breaking down deals. Um, one of my one of my things that I like to do is uh, underwrite deals. So um, you know, um, and I always say, you know, master the fundamentals. If you don't know your numbers, you don't you don't know if you got a deal or not. So um, I hope that answered your question. Yes, we have more questions as well, and I want to get them because they're relevant to what you're talking about. It says, what is the um, the procedure to invest? Do I go to advance the IRA and start the process? So if you want to use um, you know, retirement funds, yes, get your account established with us. Again, we can get that open pretty quickly, get the funds transferred in, and then the third step will then be making your investment. So uh, Rashad, I don't know if you want to add something to that. Yes. Yeah, so, um... Yeah, definitely reach out. That that's 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 the process, and um, we'll also send you a link to invest in the investor portal to create a profile. Um, and we try to make it seamless, right? You can literally fund your investment with a few clicks. I know Advanta IRA. We got a couple of different steps that we got to do um, as far as the paperwork because they like wet signatures and not you know DocuSign. But other than that, I mean, you could you could fund your investment in a few clicks. It's, the investor portal is uh, very user friendly. You know, you you choose how you want to take the investment as an individual sole proprietor, LLC, IRA, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera, joint. You know, so and after that, the the, the templates are already there, so um, you can. It's, it's very fairly easy to do. Um, at the end of this slide, I have a QR code that actually takes you to the portal where you can um, create your um, investor. Um, profile. Okay, and then to confirm and can clarify, the wet signature is only depending on if you're moving funds from an existing IRA, the other custodian requires that, but once your account is funded, in terms of sending the money to um, to an investment provider, actually that does, uh, you can do that electronically via DocuSign. So that's a, a, a streamlined process for you. Next question is, what is the cost per square foot to build your luxury tiny homes? Cost per square foot. We're at about, that's a great question. I got the paper right here. Um, we're at about $215 a square foot. Um, that's with horizontal. Um, if the horizontal wasn't in there, we'll be under $200 a square foot. The horizontal was just so expensive. Um, you know, like I said, I think, I, 
I tried to, I tried to, you know, fight it, but I think the engineer in the city made me over engineer the property. Um, but I was able to save a lot of money, um, you know, from the last time I did this presentation. Um, I'm not working with the same general contractor. Um, I went and got all my numbers myself. And, uh, you know, one thing I'm big on is, you know, integrity. So um, once I start getting inclinations that, you know, um, my, my general contractor is fluffing the numbers, um, you know, I'm zero tolerance. So um, they're out um, and we're, we're just gonna um, GC it myself. So we I was able to save a lot of money and find a lot of capital that goes back to the bottom line to my investors by, you know, getting the numbers myself. Okay, more questions. It says, um, is any of the buildings prefab or is it all stick built on site? It's all stick built. It's all stick built on site. Okay, um, more questions is um, for 5,000 to 12,000 investment a level, please repeat the expected ROI and what is the expected time frame for receiving the funds back? So is it, you know, how long is the hold and so forth? Yeah, so, um, I got about, so we, I got quoted on my horizontal 12 weeks. So we're three weeks in. So we got about, um, what, nine, nine more weeks on the horizontal. And then uh, it's a 12 month bill to complete all of the units, but we're going to do them in phases. We're building them in, them, we're building them in phases of, of 10 or 12, depending on which units we get, because the bank that I have, they don't want more than $1.5 million of exposure. So I'll build them in 10 or 12 tranches. And uh, once I build those 10 to 12, since the infrastructure are already in and the amenities are already in, those people can move in and then we'll start on phase two and then those people will move in. So as far as when you get your money back, once the development is completely done, the debt investors will get paid back first, um, you know, right, right behind the bank. The bank will get paid back along the way. Um, you know, that's kind of how they structure it. Okay, uh, question. Another question related to investment is Can investments be paid in installments? I can ask the clarify, but it says, Can investments be paid in installments? Meaning, like if they started, I'm assuming if they started on, let's just say, a threshold of $5,000, but they want to do another capital call at a later time, um, please feel free to verify or um, clarify your question. Yes, yeah, so I, I, I never got that question asked like that. But the way you put it, Renika, yes, you can you can put in five thousand or ten thousand and come back and put in another ten. Yes, you you could. Um, it, it, you'll just start a different investment because you know um, it won't be the total. It'll be based on the individual you know investment and where you came in and, and how long your capital has been deployed. Okay. Um... So one more question before we get started um, on the slides. It's, and great questions, by the way. Keep them coming. It says, if we have an ex um, existing property in Tampa, would you be interested in partnering to create a tiny home community condo? Yes, for sure, most definitely. Um, if you got, if you have property in Tampa, please send it over. I get um, me and my guys. I have a meeting about it, and we'll get we'll get my acquisitions guy to go check out the property and walk it. Um, I'm actually going to be in Tampa in the next couple of weeks. So, um, you know, you're right on time. I probably, okay. I probably, yeah. Um, next question. I think you just, you answered this recently. It says, what is the average square foot for each home? I think you said 215 or something like that. Well, no, that was the average uh, price to build. The okay. average square foot. So let me break this down. The average square foot of each home. So we have, uh, 20 of the 815 square foot units. We have eight of the 520 square foot units, and we have 14 of the 630 square foot units. So that's going to average out, you know, um, to guesstimate, that's going to average out to about uh, 750 square feet. Okay. Uh, you can continue with the, the slides. Great questions, by the way. Okay. So yeah, so now let's talk about market validation. Um, you know, just judging by, you know, all the inquiries that we've been getting, um, the market, this is what the market wants. Um, currently, I have a, a list of about 120 people that are interested in buying this specific product, not something else, not anything down the line, this specific product. And we only have 42 homes. Well, 41, because I'm, I'm getting one, but it's only 41 homes left to get. And we have a list already that even before we start the pre-sales, they got first right of refusal. So we'll probably sell the targeted, um, you know, 
20 units. We want to, that's my target. I want to sell 20 to 21 units um, in the pre-sales and, um, you know, we'll revisit uh, mark the price and everything as we build them because, you know, even though we have these numbers, um, we don't know what it, exactly what it costs until we actually build one. So the, the marketing strategy behind that is we'll build one of each unit. And um, for one, that for many reasons, one, to make sure they build it right so they can just duplicate it throughout the rest of the community. And, um, you know, two, we get the actual cost of what it takes each one to build. Hopefully it's lower. Sometimes it may be higher. But um, that's why I didn't want to sell it all the way out. Even though in my builder's contract, I got I got it written in there that we could raise the prices based on the fluctuation of the cost to build. So, um, you know, I'm not really going off this slide, but you all can read it. Um, you know, I just kind of, you know, know all this stuff. But, um, you know, micro homes, you know, 7.4 billion by 2025, 60% um, of millennials and younger generations are interested in smaller, more affordable homes. Um, you know, the new generation, they kind of like to move around, you know, um, the, the days of getting that 3000 square foot house and, you know, only living in about three of those rooms are pretty much going to be over one. The prices went through the roof. You can't really afford, you know, that size of a house. And two, you know, when you really think about it, I mean, you're only in a few rooms in your house. I mean, I know, I know I do. Um, it's, it's, it's a couple rooms in my house. I only been in it three, four times. So, um, outside of the kitchen, living room, my bedroom and, uh, you know, the bathroom, you know, uh, we congregate in, in only those areas and we have all the essentials we need in these tiny houses that we're creating. Um, that picture over there to the right, that's me on the first day of construction. Um, I was, I was real happy to, to get out there in the dirt had been spending a lot of time in the office. So, um, you know, good to be back out in the field. Um, that's a, another actual picture of the site. Um, we've so far out of the eight and a half acres so far, we've, we've cleared around three to four acres. The guys are out there right now as we're doing this um, presentation. And I just wanna go over kind of the timeline of where, where we've come and where we're going. Um, last year, January 2023, we got the city council approval um, to build the tiny homes. Then we got all the entitlements and everything going through zoning, getting the PUD approved. Um, and then from November to February of this year, um, we got our architectural and civil engineer plans approved. And um, from March to August, which was a, ooh, that was a tough time. Um, you know, we got the land disturbance permit. Um, I was going through a lot of stuff with the city. Um, they had never seen this product. And, uh, you know, it was, just, it was just, it was just, it was just a, it was a grind to get this land disturbance permit, but we're here now. Um, we're in week three of construction and, um, you know, we're, we're making great progress. Pre-sale starts in October as well. So I'm excited about that. Um, we've already kind of talked about the pre-sales plan. Um, I'll go ahead and kind of go over um, the ratio. 85% of 85% of the community will be homeowners. 15% will be investor units. Um, I get a lot of people asking about Airbnb. Um, you can't Airbnb. That's not that's not my rule, um, but um, that's the city rule. So they they don't do any short term rentals unless it's in a rural area and it's over on over an acre of land. So um, you cannot Airbnb, that's not my rule. It's just, you know, that's that's the city's rule. Um, this picture down here um, to the lower right, this is me having a community community meeting with the neighbors, letting them know that everything that I'm doing and also um, including them um, on, you know, what they would like to see. So we did a SWOT analysis. We went over strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats in the area. Um, I actually own around 40 acres uh, by myself on this same street. And I also um, are partnering with two developers um, that's contiguous to my 40 acres um, on 230 acres to do a master plan community. So I don't know if you all ever heard of a charrette process, but that's that's what that's what we were doing in this picture um, to the bottom right. Um, we did a charrette process where we brought out city officials, the neighbors, the community, and you know, just community leaders to put our heads together um, and you know see what they want to see developed 
in this area. Most developers would just come in and just, you know, drop it on them. But uh, I actually wanted to include the neighbors and let them know what was coming um, because we, we want to kind of retain the residents as well. We don't want to run them out. Um, competitive advantage. I, I talk about this all the time. You know, we're, we're under the average sales price, um, you know, to buy. Even though these are smaller units, um, you know, these are more luxury style units. Instead of having shingle roofs, we got uh, standing seam roofs. That's about triple the price of a shingle. Um, we have custom windows, uh, bifold accordion doors, floating steps. Um, you know, we have an upgrade option. I was talking to my wife who's doing the design. Um, one of the upgrade options could potentially be to have tile, you know, tile flooring throughout, you know, um, we're still waiting to see if that's what the people want, but these are going to be, you know, um, you know, more luxury feel. Um, if you look at the gold and look at the right side of that gold, uh, unit, um, they actually got a brick veneer over there with windows. I've never seen that. So I think this, we're bringing a unique product. They got a lot of green space in the community. Um, and I think it's just going to be a, a great feel, you know, it's outside of the actual structure. I mean, you know, the experience that you're going to get is going to be gated. Um, you know, we're going to have dog parks, walking trails, um, fire pits, you know, um, it, it's, it's going to be a great oasis in the middle of the city. So let's talk about what the public is saying. Um, I know the one lady had the question about Denver. Um, we get this all the time. Hey, can you do this in Cali? Can you do this in Nevada? Um, can you do this in Florida? What about Nashville? You know, what about Raleigh, North Carolina? So um, everybody is seeing what we're doing and, uh, you know, they want to bring it to their city. Um, so um, I'm definitely, you know, all ears to it, but it definitely has to make sense. I have a couple more questions before we go to the next slide, if you uh, agree. Okay. It says, uh, could you share what the um, share what the floor plans uh, look like for the homes? I know you talked about the three options, and then the next one. Well, I'll let you answer that one, and then I'll talk, ask the next question. Yeah. So once I'm once I get through the slides, I can show you um, what these units look like. I did have the units on the previous presentations, but now that we're in construction, I just want to kind of just you know give it a fresh look and and just give you more updates. But also too um go to the website valentinaestates.com v-a-l-e-n-t-i-n-a estates.com and uh, you can do virtual walkthroughs um, and you can see all of the units and floor plans on the website as well okay uh, next question is uh, what is the investment amount to get 20 percent or 25 percent roi so in order to get 20% ROI, um, you'll be investing in class C, um, you know, tranche one. So that's anywhere from 20,000 up to 99,000 investment. And in order to get 25%, you will, um, that's 100K or more. So it's all, it's all annualized. Um, you'll be getting that same return as long as your capital is, is, is deployed. Okay, the questions. Thank you. Okay, so um, another thing, um, inquiries. So this is this is our actual back office. Um, when people inquire from either uh, text or through our website, um, you know, people asking, you know, how can they buy the units? You got buyers, you got people, agents. Um, so the the interest is definitely there. Um, I actually got a call from a lady about three or four weeks ago. Um, you know, in all honesty, she was having issues getting in contact with us. I don't know why, but um, you know, she's like, "Hey, I'm, I'm a cash buyer. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna be the first person you call." And I was like, "Okay, you definitely will." Like, I wrote a name on my board, so she'll be the first person I call before we even start pre-sales. Um, and that's one of my strategies as well, because there's no comps of tiny homes nowhere in Chattanooga. We are leading the pack. So um, one of the things that I am going to do is for these investor units, they're going to set the comp. They're going to set the comp. So, um, you know, once once she pays for her unit cash and we need about three of those, we won't have any issues with uh, with appraisals. I don't think we'll have any issues anyway, because, you know, um, 
you know, if you look at it as a condo, um, it's about the same price per square foot. So any questions on that before I get into the next the next thing? All right. So what no you're looking questions at, yet. Okay. So what you're looking at right here, I told you I own 40 acres on this same street, right? So if you look to the left, that is the tiny home community. Um, that is the 42 micro homes. Um, if you go a little bit to the right and where you see um, Shamrock Drive and Sunbelt Drive and Little Rock Road, <laughs> um, that is phase two. Phase two is either 52 to 70 single family houses. Um, these will not be micro homes, they'll be regular single family houses. And uh, if you look to the north of that, that looks kind of like a one, um, I have that parcel under contract right now. So, um, and we're scheduled to close at the end of this month. Um, phase phase one is the tiny homes. Phase two and three um, are single family homes. And uh, that will be going into a fund. You will need to be an accredited investor um, to invest in phase two and three. Um, so I just want to let, let that be known, um, you know, what kind of what we're doing. Um, I didn't include the 230 acres that I'm partnered with, with two other developers, but it's also connected to this and it's north of, you know, the plot of land that looks like a number one. So all together, we got about, um, you know, 200 and, you know, 60, 70 acres that we're going to be doing development on. So um, if you're interested in the micro homes, definitely reach out. If you're interested and you are an accredited investor, because um, we're going we're gonna to be going to the fund model um, after this, because as the deals got bigger, um, I've been, you know, we have to find more creative ways to raise the capital. So it'd be a $10 million fund um, to build over 275 homes. What would be the minimum buy-in for the accredited investor? Like, can they start at 100000 200000 Like, do you know? Yes, yes. So um, there's, there's actually no limit. Um, on phase two with the fund. Um, the, and let's go over the fund structure because I know that's very important. So the fund structure is gonna be a little different. It's gonna be 60% owned to the investors, 40% owned by the fund manager, which is me. And um, so it'll be 60, 40, um, you will have some fees in there. I, I can send out the PPM um, so you can kind of read over it, but it'll also be in that investor portal. Um, but it's just not in there yet. I want to let you all know what's coming ahead. And, um, but it's, it, it'll be, it'll be, um, it'll be probably similar returns because you're getting 60% of the equity, you know, um, you know, so I hope that answered your question. It did. Thank you. Okay. All right. So that's, that's kind of, you know, I just want to kind of give you a visual of, you know, this 40 acres that that I have and uh, you know you can invest now with the tiny homes you can invest you know with the uh, accredited investor fund um, we're raising 10 million dollars on that and um, you know it's gonna be it's gonna be a great project um, this entire side of town will be changed for sure so um, if you're ready to invest you can scan the QR code I have all of my information there my email, this is my real phone number, my direct contact phone number. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, I'm not doing anything for the next couple of hours. I'm actually eating my lunch in office today. So um, if you wanna get on the call after this, definitely reach out to me. Um, I'll answer all your questions. And um, you know, hopefully, hopefully you, you got all the information that you needed from this presentation and um, I'm ready for Q&A. Okay. Thank you so much, Rashad. Uh, great presentation, great information as always. A couple questions is, um, how frequently do you, um, are distributions made to investors and also how often do you communicate? Is it sent out weekly, monthly, quarterly? Like how do you? Yes, no, that's a great question. So um, with my equity investors, which is already closed um, and if some of them are on this presentation, they know we meet the last Thursday of every month. But if you're a debt investor, you'll get a newsletter every month. And uh, I'm actually getting ready to stop calling it a, a newsletter and just rebranding it as an investor report. 
Um, so you'll, you'll get an investor report every month. If you are an equity investor, um, we meet every month on Zoom. Um, the same thing that will go when we start the fund, um, you'll actually get quarterly financials because that's more of a longer commitment, the fund, because we're doing multiple projects within that fund. Um, you'll get a quarterly financial report and we'll still do the monthly meetings and um, the, the investor reports monthly will be ongoing as well. Okay, uh, one question that came up is, uh, how do you adjust for a down market? How do I adjust for the job market? Down market, like if the real estate market is considered down or? Well, yeah, well, I did all the adjusting this past year. I mean, it was rough this past year, interest rates up, but good thing about what for me was the time and um, we weren't building. Um, so now that the rates are trending down uh, and, and we're under the average median sales price, um, I don't think we're going to have an issue. And if we did have an issue, um, I would adjust accordingly, you know, um, having getting on my lenders and making them give more incentives with rate buy downs and things like that. So, um, you know, if, if I make them um, buy down a point, and the average interest rate is 6% and you're getting it at five, that's a bargain. So those are the type of adjustments that, that I will make. Um, as an athlete, I'm used to making in-game adjustments. You know, I think that's what separates good coaches from great coaches. You know, you come in with a game plan, you get hit in the mouth, you gotta adjust. That That's that's what separates the champions, you know, um, or you're gonna get going and get hit in the mouth and, you know, um, just, you know, be a ping pong ball and let the market do what it does to you. But for me, I'm definitely going to adjust no matter what happens. Uh, great. Uh, a couple more questions. It says, how many bedrooms in the tiny homes? I assume one bedroom. Any HOA? If so, what are the fees, lot size of the tiny home? Yes. Yeah, so there are no lot sizes um, because it's a condo ownership. So it's on one big plat. Um, to answer your last question. Um, the 815 square foot unit model, uh, which is the biggest model, is a two bedroom, one and a half bath. The mid-size model um, is a one bedroom, one loft with one bath. And the smallest unit, um, the smallest unit is one bed, one loft. Well, no, I'm sorry. The smallest unit is just the loft. So it kind of trends, trends down. You got a two bedroom, one and a half. And then you got a one bedroom, one loft with one bathroom, and then you have a loft with one bathroom. So you kind of got something for everybody, um, you know. And uh, the one, the unit that I, I will get will be the two bedroom for sure. Okay. Uh, next question is: Are these homes being designed in Rutgen or hurricane-prone areas, different from College Park homes? Yeah, so um, these will be my own designs. Um, we're gonna actually, the one in Ruskin is going to be the exact same designs that we're using in Chattanooga. Um, and to answer that previous question, I just remember she asked about HOA. The HOA is gonna be around 150 to $200. Uh, me and my attorney are still working on the HOA covenants. And um, so we'll be able to zero in on the actual cost, but right now we're giving all the buyers a ballpark range. Um, and we're we're trending more on the high side because we rather come back with good news and say, hey, instead of 200, it's 150, instead of them getting ahead of themselves, getting underwritten and saying 150 when it's really 200. I mean, if somebody's numbers are tight, that can really throw throw them off from being approved or not approved. So we're telling everybody 200, but I'm trying to get it lower uh, than that. Sounds good. Um, the question about the Ruskin and Hurricane Prone area is different from College Park, you did answer. Say that again, Renika. The last question I think you did answer, it says, are the homes being uh, designed um, in Ruskin and uh, are Hurricane Prone areas different from College Park? You said you're designing the, the well, yeah, Ruskin so, and Chattanooga property. Yeah, no, so that's a great question because it is different building in Florida. So um, what me and my partners talk about, it'll be the same design, but we may have to put it on piers, and uh, that's that's typically normal down in Florida. Um, and we'll have a Florida GC. So um, I've never built in Florida, but um, the Florida GC, Gil, he's going to be, you know, making sure that we have everything in them. And also, too, 
um, the city's not going to let us build unless it's according, you know, to their, you know, building code. So um, the building code will change, but the design will be the same. Okay, that covers um, the bulk of the questions, and also too, we're right at top of the hour, so that's that's perfect timing. If you have any last questions, go ahead and uh, answer those in the question box. But Rashad. I want to say again, thank you so much for uh, being our speaker today. Very informative, very engaging. Thank you, um, attendees, for, for all of your questions and just taking the time to, to join us today. If you have uh, questions related to self direction, you want to get your account set up, or you know, just want to talk more about your scenario, you're always welcome to uh, give me a call or you know, just you know, schedule a consultation. Nice. Any parting words? Any yeah, no, nah, I, I just want to say. Thank, oh, I'm sorry, Renika. No, go ahead. Any parting words before we close out? Yes, I want to say thank you uh, for sitting through this presentation. Hopefully, I didn't bore you. Hopefully, you know, I, I spoke with a passion and, uh, you know, you got everything that you needed out of this in order to make a decision. Um, we're going to be busy for the next couple of years building hundreds of homes. I love for you all to be on that journey with me. Um, like I said, the communication will be up to par. We meet every month. If you're an equity investor, you'll get an investor report every every month um, if you're a debt investor. And uh, also, too, I mean, you could actually follow the project. I document my process on YouTube. So you'll be able to you'll never be in the dark. Um, you know, you can definitely follow the process. We upload videos weekly about progress and everything like that. So I think it'd be a great project to be a part of. And uh, like I said, um, I think one of the keys to being a passive investor is 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 knowing um, where your money is doing and where it's at, and you know, being able to see it physically. I mean, I, I think that that's that's a great thing. One quick question that just came in: It says, "What community facilities, if any, in tiny home community?" Oh, what what type of facilities? You mean amenities? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna have. Uh, walking trails, dog parks, um, we're gonna have uh, gazebos, we got tons of green space. And this is a part that I did leave out. Um, I don't have a visual for it, but it was, it's an actual piece of land. It's about uh, 0.25 acres. Um, it's about a quarter of an acre um, that I just got under contract. And um, I'm gonna use that for green, for actually more green space to put a fire pit in it. So um like a sunken fire pit so i don't think i've ever seen a sunken fire pit in a in a community or subdivision but i think it, i think that'd be dope um to to go with the trend of what we're trying to do um with this new age uh, community so um those are some of the amenities that we'll have outside of the gate ev chargers uh that's an amenity as well um and also what i'm working on as well is um, storage lockers um, we have we have we have ample parking space, so I'm trying to take back some of that parking space and put some storage lockers so people can actually store their stuff if if they have a little bit more than what the tiny home can hold. So um, we're trying to be a lot forward thinking with this and um, accommodating, so uh, and make it you know not just a, a build build and go on to the next one, but build something meaningful. Okay, more questions, and which is a good thing. It says, do the homes have private back backyard space? Yes, yes, yeah, they got front and backyard space. But this, this is the thing, right? So in a community like this, I don't know if you've ever heard of a, a agri, agri hood community, uh, if you've ever heard of Serenby or Trillith, um, where you build on, let's say you build on 30% of the land, and this other 70% is the green space is everybody's. So instead of having your own, you do have your own personal yard, but you can't put a fence up. Um, you do have your own personal yard, but the, the the thing is, it's all yours. All it's the whole entire green space is yours. Like so, that's 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 the difference. But you do have backyards. Okay. One question that came in re re regarding your portal it says, "I'm logged into the account. Where do I see the investment opportunities?" Um, once you once you create your profile, um, the investment opportunity should pop up. Um, you got Valentina Estates, and then you have the Post Pro Capital Fund. I don't think that one has launched yet, but um, you should be able to see the investment once you get in. And um, if not, just give me a call. My number's right here on the screen, and I can walk you through it. Okay.
Um, with that, I'll go ahead and end um, today's webinar. But again, great content. Uh, thank you so much, Rashad. Thank you, audience, for your participation, your time, and happy investing, everyone. All right. Thank you.